we're talking about the Coronation Capital Plus Fund. We've already stated that it has been going for 10 years. You've got around about 10 billion rand in terms of funds under management. Perhaps let's just start in terms of what exactly you do and the philosophy behind the Coronation Capital Plus Fund. Yeah, I think, Bronwyn, the whole idea when we launched the fund was to launch a product that gives you some upside uh, to the equity market, but at the same time protects you from some of the downside risks that the equity market uh, always accompanies. So the, the whole value proposition to clients was to say we try not to lose money over a 12-month rolling period. So in other words, we don't want to have negative returns over a 12-month rolling period, but we try and outperform inflation by about 4% on a long-term basis. And Fortunately, the fund's been going, as you said, for 10 years now, and we've managed to do that and produce a little bit extra, about 3-4% extra uh, over the last 10 years. But then we know the market's been very good to us, so we don't want to say that to clients going forward that we continue to do that. Louis, Coronation is quite aggressive on taking money out. Uh, I see you've got your full allocation of about 25% offshore. But uh, the one question is that of that, 7.5% is in cash which yields zero. Um, yeah. <laughs> can you explain that? It's, or a, it's a dilemma. It, mm. Yeah, it's a, mm. it's a dilemma, David. But at the same time, we feel strongly about two things. We think that offshore mm. brings great diversification benefits, and therefore um, I think it's the right thing to do. And then with that, we also have a view on the currency, and we think the currency is unsustainably strong. So we are happy to have it offshore and then what we try and do is on an opportunistic basis we will deploy that cash. The fact that we have got exchange control in place means that every now and then there's something you can do with offshore cash mm -hmm. but you can't do it with local cash. Recently we had a capital shopping centre, uh, capital raising that we could participate in um, and, and we do those kind of things but at the same time I think it's important this is a low risk fund so we don't want the cash to burn holes in our pockets. So we'll have it there if we think it's the right thing to do. And gradually we probably will end up investing more offshore into equities and reduce the local equities because it is our view that we think offshore equities are offering better opportunities. Seeing you want to lose your reputation on calling currencies by having, you know, calling the RAND, which currency uh, have you chosen? of that or have you split it at uh, 7 uh, And to add to that, we just had Bridget Taylor in studio, Louis, last night saying that it's a, it's a race to the bottom on the euro and, and the dollar. So yeah. we're not really sure where you, what cash holding you have got out there. Yeah, look, it, you're 100% right. It is a problem. It is a problem that uh, uh, it's a case of the ugly sisters and which one is the best, of, best looking of the ugly sisters. But we have split it pretty much between the dollar, the euro, a little bit in the pound. We, we're a bit concerned, and as you say, David, uh, currencies can, can show you up horribly wrong. But we're a little bit concerned that all this sort of safe haven type of currencies have already run very hard. So I think mm -hmm. one's got to be very careful not to try and find... Uh, safety in the Swiss franc and things like that. So we pretty much kept it dollar, euro and a little bit of pound. And, and Louis, your bond exposure is also fairly high, 26 and a half local bonds, etc. That's also very interesting. Uh, um, I think we asked uh, last week, we asked Charles about his exposure. Charles de Kock. Ch Charles de Kock and he told yeah. us they were in inflation linked bonds. Are you also very heavily linked to, uh, I mean, in inflation linked bonds? Yes, very much so. We, um, about half of that uh, bond exposure uh, is in inflation linkers and mostly corporate um, inflation linkers where you get a little bit of a credit spread pickup as well. And then I must also emphasize that the local bonds are actually in very low duration um, stocks. So um, the duration, modified duration of the portfolio is very, very low. So the interest rate risk is very low. Um, it is more to pick up that credit spread uh, from the uh, corporates. Coming back to the, the local equity front, and, and just for our viewers, throwing forward to a couple of, of the stocks that do stand out in your portfolio, perhaps we can start with MTN, because David alluded to it at the <laughs> beginning of the show, saying he can't wait to speak to Louis Stassen about MTN and his thoughts on, on where that stock is growing. Just to give you the background, David feels that it is ex-growth. <laughs> Look, Bronwyn, we, we don't mind ex-growth stocks and stories as long as it's priced for it. And we mm -hmm. think in MTN's case, we probably agree there's a little bit of growth in, in certain pockets of the portfolio, but by and large, it's past its, its strong growth area. 
Um, however, they've spent a lot of money in a lot of places in Africa putting up these networks, and we, we can already start seeing the cash mm. coming back. And as long as a company accepts that it's X growth and it starts paying that cash back or it buys back shares, um, then we're very happy holders of the stock. So in that case, that is one of the underlying investment theses of, of the MTN holding. Louis, if it, I see you quite heavily exposed, or when I say heavily exposed, perhaps that's an overstatement, but uh, some of your top holdings are bank shares, Standard Bank, uh, you've got Remgro, which has a big exposure to, uh, to First Rand, and uh, my, my top choice in your sector is actually your company, <laughs> Coronation, which gives you a very good 8% dividend yield. Um, I'll have to check why, whether he's putting yeah. money into your fund at this stage as well from a disclosure perspective. <laughs> no, I, th I think Coronation has been an incredible performer and gives you back a, it's a, it's a massive dividend yielder. Um, what's the attraction in Standard Bank and Remgro? I think it's, uh, Remgro is a relatively easy and simple story. We think it's a portfolio of quality assets of which probably 85-90% of those assets on an individual basis we like a lot. Um, and then you get it at a discount of 15, 16, 17%, uh, depending on when you buy it. And, and we think that's attractive. Again, remember this fund is a low risk fund. So if we can buy something that we like at a 15% discount, we like it a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we think that that discount gives you a little bit of a buffer. Um, we don't think it's going to be unbundled. We don't see the discount disappearing overnight. But at the same time, if you buy it, um, it, it as I said, it gives you a little bit of protection. Um, Standard Bank, you're right, is one of our biggest holdings, equity holdings in the fund. And it's, I suppose the, the main story there is that it is trading, it's not expensive, we believe. It's trading sort of a 1.7, 1.8 times book with very decent uh, return on equity stats. And we think the unwinding of the, of the bad debt cycle will continue and will support earnings. So it's not, we don't see it doubling, we don't see it going up a lot, but at the same time, again, uh, bear in mind where the, what the risk profile of this fund is. We're very happy to hold something that we think is very fairly priced and has got decent uh, prospects. And Louis, your thoughts on construction? I see that you have a reasonable holding in Avenge. You've been building that. I don't know whether you're building that up or that's historical, but you know, we, we always argue that on the desk. I'm, I'm saying it's far too early, but I think there are a lot of fund managers mm -hmm. who are starting to pick up uh, construction shares. Yeah, it's a good question, David. We debate it a lot, um, and we hold some other construction stocks as well. Um, Avenge, we started buying probably about four or five months ago. Um, I think the main thing, we, we can't see the cycle turning quickly. We think there is a dearth of new activity. Uh, although tenders seem to be going out, it's a question of now getting the tenders um, away and, and starting construction on those tenders. Um, but in Avenger's case in particular, and that's why it's the biggest holding in the fund uh, of the construction shares, we think the downside again is fairly limited. It sits with a lot of cash after it sold its cement uh, interests probably five, five years, four years ago, almost at the peak of the cycle. They were taken out. It hasn't really spent much of that cash. And so of the 36 Rand share price, about I'd say about seven, eight Rand of that uh, sits in cash on the balance sheet. Um, again, we're not quite sure what management's going to do with it. We interact with them and we give them our views. Uh, but as long as it doesn't get spent badly, we think it's quite a nice, again, a nice buffer uh, in terms of downside protection. And that's so you can see the mindset coming through of, of first looking what the risks are in a, in a particular holding mm -hmm. rather than what the maximum upside is. And, and on that basis, we then start building a portfolio, hoping that some of these will come through on a regular basis on the upside then. As, as David alluded to earlier, we do debate the construction story ferociously on this news desk. And, and any day now, I know David's going to turn around and go, right, it's time to buy these construction stocks. Just waiting for that day. Tiger Brands, uh, under pressure after its recent results, I, I see it's one of your key holdings. Well, it's one of the stocks that you're interested in. Uh, you don't mind the smaller tomato sauce bottles. <laughs> Don't mind it at all. I love it actually because it means the volume growth is going to be higher. Um, yeah, I think the portfolio sort of have two stories to it. The one is, is the construction avenge type of story where we say we think the downside is pretty much limited and the bad, a lot of the bad news is priced in the, into the portfolio. And then on the other hand, we hold stories like Tiger Brands, uh, like MTN I would put in that category as well, where we say it's very strong 
defensive businesses with strong cash flow generation, um, in some cases pricing power, obviously not MTN, but in Tiger Brands' case, strong pricing power because of the, the strength of the brands. And therefore, even though that uh, stock is not particularly cheap, we think over time it's going to grow its franchise value. Its value, the inherent value of the business will go up um, as those, those brands come to the fore. And, and therefore we, we hold it. We also hold some SPA, which is sort of a similar story. It's not a cheap stock, but we think over time they will add value to the business. And, and that gives us the defensive nature of the equity component uh, of the portfolio.